Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 video and it focuses on the formation of ions in terms of electron loss or gain as well as the electron configuration for these cations and anions. Now if you haven't seen the previous video on electron configurations you need to go away and do that first and you'll find a link in the description below. If you haven't already done so can I please ask that you like and subscribe so we can get these videos out to as many people as possible. Thank you. So let's look at losing electrons first then. Now electrons have a negative charge. If you lose a negative charge, it means you have more protons than electrons, protons being positive, so you become positively charged when you lose an electron. The periodic table can be used to predict the charges on ions. Group one metals will donate one electron and therefore become plus one cations the term cation is given to a positive ion. Group two will donate two electrons and become plus two cations. And any group three metals will donate three electrons and become plus three cations. So what happens when you gain electrons then? Well, the opposite happens. Electrons are negatively charged. If you gain an electron, you become negatively charged. And again, we can use the periodic table. This time, we're going to look at the right hand side. Group seven will accept one electron and become minus one anions. And an anion is a term given to a negative ion. Group six will gain two electrons and become minus two anions. So what is ionic bonding? Well, following this transfer of electrons, from the metal to the non-metal, we were left with positively charged cations on the metal and negatively charged anions on the non-metal. An ionic bond then is defined as the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. And there will be many cations and many anions when this chemical reaction takes place or this transfer of electrons. And that means we end up with a huge or a giant ionic lattice that's all held together by ionic bonds. We can see that in this diagram here where for example the purple might be a positive cation, a metal cation, and the green perhaps might be a negative anion and we've got a huge regular lattice of positive cations attracted to the negative anions and this would be classed as a giant ionic lattice held together by strong ionic bonds. Now it's time to look at the electron configuration for these cations and anions. And again, this is the point now that if you haven't seen the previous video, this won't make an awful lot of sense. So you make sure you go away and watch that first. So the electron configuration for a sodium atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Now when it forms a positive cation, sodium's in group 1, it's going to donate one electron. So it's going to lose that 3s electron and become a positive charge. So the electron configuration for Na plus is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So let's look at an example from group 2 then. So this is now magnesium which is in group 2. That means it will donate two electrons. Which electrons will it lose? It will lose the electrons in the highest energy level which is those 3s electrons. So they've gone They've been donated. The electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 now, and it becomes a 2 plus cation. Now let's look at something in group 7, chlorine. So chlorine has the electron configuration here, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. This time though, being in group 7, it's going to accept one electron. It's going to gain an electron. It's going to go in that 3p orbital. It's going to go from 3p5 to 3p6 and it will have a negative charge, Cl minus. You might start seeing a pattern here. So now let's look at something in group six, such as sulfur. What's this going to do? Well, it's going to accept two electrons. It's going to fill those 3p subshell, those two orbitals there, become 3p6. And the charge will be two minus. So there's an anion of sulfur, which will be called sulfide. 
Let's look at a more difficult example then. You may recall from the previous video that the 4S subshell will fill before the 3D. So something from the transition block, such as vanadium, has a slightly different looking electron configuration. Now, the 4S filled before the 3D. So let's have a look at what vanadium 3 plus might look like. Now, we can't use the periodic table to predict charges here on transition metals, so don't think I am. I'm just telling you this is a 3 plus. That means it's lost three electrons. Now, the first two electrons to be lost are from the 4S. So the 4S filled before the 3D, it will also empty before the 3D. So there's two electrons gone. So that 4S subshell has now gone. I needed to lose three electrons though to become three plus. So I've removed two already. Now the next electron will be removed from that 3D. So it now becomes 3D2. So the electron configuration for V3 plus, 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 3D2. Right, thanks for watching. Make sure you watch this next video on strength of ionic bonds. You'll find a link in the description below.